Almost everyone probably knows of a couple that has struggled with infertility. A recent study shows that in 1984, the estimated percentage of couples with fertility problems was 5.4%. Now the rate is up to 15.7%. Well, award-winning singer-songwriter Jacob Moon and his wife Allison found out that they were a part of this group in 2010, not knowing that while they grieved the pain that they might never have their own biological child, God was starting another chapter in their family. Welcome, Jacob. It's good to be here, Maggie. Tell us about 2010 and hearing that news. Yeah, that had kind of followed a, f a series of years where we, uh, we, you know, had tried to have kids. We'd been to doctors. We'd had people pray for us. We kind of thought that uh, <clears throat> God was going to answer that, that, that prayer of ours. Mm -hmm. And it had got actually so painful uh, when we heard that news um, that we just prayed that God would take that desire away because mm -hmm. we'd been praying this repetitive prayer for God to, to kind of um, help us realize this dream of having kids. And, and it felt like he was so far away. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like he was hearing that prayer. He wasn't, he wasn't speaking into our distress at the time. And so we weren't sure where to turn. And uh, we were kind of at that place, that, that liminal place between one thing and another. And we weren't sure where to, where to go. And Allison, it was hard for her. Yeah, it was hard. So she would, she would go to church and there'd be, you know, there'd be babies being dedicated, and be twins, triplets being pushed down the street. And it was all just, it was beautiful, right? Because yeah, it's babies. But if it's like, if it's the thing that you're longing for, it's, it can be a trigger for your own grief sometimes. How so. about you? Because I think we always hear a lot about the mother's mm -hmm. journey through this, yeah. the woman's journey through this, but not necessarily the husband's journey through that. Yeah, it hit me hard and, and I didn't know what I could do really. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm a songwriter, so I kind of turned to song and and uh, and sort of prayed through this song called "End of the Road," mm -hmm. about waiting for kids. And um, finally, this song came came about. That I just felt really expressed my heart for her, and uh, and also my hope for her and for us that mm -hmm. that it wasn't the end of the road. That it was there was something that God was doing throughout this that maybe we couldn't see, and um, we were going to find out about in in due time. You know. And that led you to a trip to El Salvador to meet yeah. your compassion child. That's right. Child. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, this little girl, eight-year-old uh, El Salvadorian girl, who uh, we'd been sponsoring through Compassion. And Compassion is a wonderful organization that uh, sponsors kids all over the world in uh, in 28 countries. There's about a million and a half kids sponsored around the world. Uh, they've been doing it for 60 years, uh, and doing an incredible job of just making sure these kids are released from poverty in the name of Jesus. Mm. And we were excited to meet her because, you know, uh, we just had we'd never done that together before. And so uh, while in country, we, uh, I remember getting off the bus and there she was and there we were. And we didn't speak Spanish and she didn't speak English. So we weren't sure how it was all going to work. And it was probably surreal just seeing her in person because you yeah. see a lot of pictures. And, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's seen pictures of us. And so it was just weird. Like, so we, <laughs> we ran to each other and right away, like, we didn't need language. Like, mm. it was just we met through the eyes and mm. through play. And, and the universal uh, language yeah. of love. Absolutely, yeah, that's well. right. And she like felt like a part of our family, like mm -hmm. legit felt like a part of our family. And that was um, surprising to me, I think, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we would have that sense of kinship right away. But it's not surprising. I mean, when you sponsor a child through compassion, you put their picture on your fridge, you pray for them, you send them um, notes of encouragement. You tell them, hey, you can do anything through through God. It gives you strength. And, and that's certainly what we did. And, and um and that really helped us cement that sense of kinship. But that day was just the thing that changed it for mm. us. Was um, it therapeutic as well? Just, you know, with everything that you had gone through and to go on this trip and meet Sarah? Was that yeah. kind of healing for both of you? Oh, it totally was. Yeah, and we didn't see it coming. We thought it would actually be really hard to mm. go and to spend time with kids. You know, we thought, well, that's going to be a bit of a trigger. But, but actually, you know, it took us out mm. of our sort of suffering and into their world, which includes suffering, but it also includes joy and includes things that she didn't know, but she was giving us a huge gift of inspiration by, by being with us that day and feeling like a part of our family, you know, so. And out of that came your song, Sarah. Yeah, I wrote this song called Sarah on the plane ride home and, and uh, kind of, I'd written all the music for it in advance and I hadn't, didn't know what it was about, yeah. but then finally this, this kind of song came about and, uh, and all the words kind of fell like a sheet from the sky mm. in one day, which was kind of cool. Well, we're going to hear that song in a little bit. We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, Jacob will share with us how God started a new chapter in his family's life. Stay with us. 